Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we have a very special gun gripe episode. I have a special guest with me here today, Mr. Eric Pratt with the Gun Owners of America. And uh, we always love having Eric here on the uh, gun gripes. Chad is going to sit this one out. I'm going to have Eric as my guest today. So today, you're getting uh, a dual dose of Eric and Eric here. So, uh, Mr. Pratt, how are you doing today? Hey, doing really well. Uh, this could get confusing, Eric. <laughs> The Eric and Eric, yeah. All right, we'll wade through it. Thank you so much for having me, though. This is great. Yeah, wonderful. So today, Eric, uh, we're going to be sort of just discussing a, uh, I guess, general status of the 2A. This is sort of a state of the union for the 2A. And uh, it seems that in the circles that we all kind of fall into with the Second Amendment community, uh, we are fighting a definite uphill battle. And I really appreciate you guys being a loud voice for that and I'm proud for my channel to be a microphone for you guys, and uh, we're very proud to support Gun Owners of America. Well, thank you. You guys have, and you've always allowed us to come on and, and help rally the troops. And uh, this is a really critical time right now, Eric, as you know. Uh, you know, after the, the two tragic mass shootings in, in early August, I mean, it's just been a full-on uh, assault uh, by uh, the left, the anti-gun left, and then, uh, you know, sadly, a lot of uh, Republicans were uh, coming out and, and saying that they were uh, supportive of doing something, you know, some gun control. And and now we're at a point where it, it almost seems like things are changing by the day. I mean, originally, we were looking at things like uh, red flag laws and universal background checks and bans on commonly owned firearms. Uh, gun Owners of America responded by uh, just having alert after alert where we were uh, generating uh, hundreds of thousands of messages. To date, we've generated over two million grassroots messages uh, that have been delivered to uh, Republican offices on Capitol Hill as well as uh, the White House. And and I think we're starting to see the mood change uh, as a result. You know, we're, we're seeing the, the president has been backtracking in recent days. You have GOP senators now coming out and saying that uh, that uh, gun control is off the table, uh, which is encouraging, although Quite frankly, I, I don't think gun control is completely off the table, not yet. Uh, recent news reporting saying that the president uh, is going to have proposals out in September uh, to include things like expanded background checks. And we're not quite sure uh, what that means. Does, does that mean universal background checks? Does that mean uh, throwing more information into the NIC, sest, uh, NIC system? We're not really sure. It could mean a lot of things. Uh, but, you know, what we're telling senators and the White House is, look, there's concealed carry reciprocity legislation that will arm more people. This is the kind of thing that, that we need to be encouraging. More good people carrying firearms, that's what will stop these mass atrocities. Also getting rid, rid of uh, gun-free zones, dismantling those things. These are, you know, when, when they're saying, what can we do? These are the things that we're telling them at Gun Owners of America. This is the things that our members are telling them. This is what we can do. And by the way, if people go to our website at gunowners.org, we have several alerts there at the top of the page. Uh, just find one. Uh, just click on the link, and uh, with just a click of the mouse, you can send off a pre-written letter or change it up however you want. Uh, but we want to add to that 2 million-plus letters uh, that have already been sent. We think it's making a big difference. Outstanding. And you're absolutely right. You know, one of the things that we sort of wind up seeing and from our end is that it becomes sort of a cause and effect, right? You know, whenever something bad happens, the automatic response is, oh, we need more right. gun control. We need more gun control. And what ends up happening is, OK, so Trump is saying that he could possibly expand background checks or he could go after a stiffer uh, background check system. All I hear when I hear that is, oh, the system we have isn't good enough. So. That means that you failed from the very beginning. So we already have a NIC system in place. We already are supposed to be implementing it and using it. So is that to say that are they admitting to us that it's not effective and that maybe they've they've slipped through the cracks on a few things as well on their end? So, you know, remember, government is also a dual prong thing that we have to look at from both perspectives. You know, these people are elected representatives who are chosen to represent us. They work for us. So anytime something happens that we don't agree with, it's important for us to raise the flag and 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 make sure they know where we stand. And uh, yeah. I think that a lot of gun owners are feeling very disenfranchised right now and, dare I say, not represented. 
No, you're right. And, and to your point, I think one thing we need to let our elected officials know is there's no amount of gun control uh, that's going to stop bad guys from getting guns. You know, the El Paso and Dayton shooters, uh, they pass background checks. So expanding background checks to, you know, have uh, uh, to cover private uh, transfers, uh, that that's not going to make any difference. They already passed the background check. Uh, you know, you, you look at countries that, my goodness, uh, uh, you know, have background checks on steroids and all kinds of, you know, gun bans, you know, thinking of places like New uh, Australia and, and France. I mean, they still have mass shootings. Bad guys still get guns there. Uh, you look at, uh, even in our own country, some of the places that have the strictest gun control laws, and they already have universal background checks like uh, Chicago and Baltimore. I mean, these are two of the the uh, you know most dangerous places in our country. So I, I think you know while we tell our legislators, look, what really makes a difference, you know, FBI is documented cases of good people stopping mass shootings uh, because they had firearms with them. In addition to to making sure they hear that message and they need to hear that, uh, they also need to hear. We do not support gun control. It will not be effective. It's been tried already. I mean, you know, the places we've been talking about, it's it's a, a massive failure. And oh, by the way, not only is it unconstitutional, it is going to hurt you at the polls. And I think it's important to deliver that political message to them that that it's gun control is a political loser. This is one of the things when um. Uh, a few weeks ago, I went on on Fox News to, you know, to warn Republicans, any Republicans that would be listening, this could be your read my lips moment. Uh, just like George Bush, H.W. Uh, Bush went back on his read my lips uh, uh, tax pledge, and and it hurt him badly, and it cost him gun control. Also cost him too, uh, but certainly his broken tax promise was a huge deal. And uh, in fact, Rush Limbaugh picked up that Fox News clip and and then replayed it. And he made the same point. I think that the, the, the message is getting out there. Republicans, if you're going to act like Democrats, then don't be surprised if your base leaves you. And, and this is really critical. You know, uh, there, uh, anybody who knows of the name Kelly Ayotte, she used to be a Republican senator from New Hampshire. Uh, but she thought that she could get, you know, some of those middle of the ground voters and, and maybe even get some Democrat voters uh, to come her way by supporting gun control. And so she, you know, uh, voted to end the filibuster on uh, on the, the ban on commonly owned firearms that Feinstein was pushing. And there were some other things, too. But you know what happened? Not all her Republican base deserted her, but just enough. Uh, the gun groups in the state said, you know what, we're through with Kelly Ayotte. They rated her a D, gave her a D rating, which is a death knell for a Republican in a state like that. And uh, sure enough, she lost by 1,017 votes because you had enough people, just a small percentage of people saying, you know what, uh, I can sit this one out or I can vote third party. And that's exactly what will happen if, you know, if, if we have a massive read my lips, yeah, we want you gun owners, but now we're going to, you know, support, you know, uh, nickel and dime you on, on Second Amendment rights. Uh, that's not going to play well at the polls if that's the route that they're going to go. And that's the message we're delivering to them. Uh, you are 110 percent correct on that. And I think that a lot of people tend to forget that there are a lot of pro-gun people out there that yes. sometimes they're not always vocal. You know, sometimes they're, they're not going to always come out and say that they're pro-gun or that they are a, that are a gun vote type of voter, right? You know, a lot of people are one-issue voters when it comes right. to the Second Amendment. And I think that people underplay, the politicians, I should say specifically, underplay the hand of how important it is to achieve the gun vote. And the only way you're going to achieve the gun vote is to protect and honor gun owners with your decisions. And when you, when you go back on your word, when you achieve the gun vote, all right, anybody, any Republican can achieve the gun vote once by going, I'm pro-gun and everything like that. And of course, they're going to give you a chance, but there's no second chances. Once you turn your back on those gun owners, that's it. It's over and they are not going to forget. And a lot of people, you know, tend to not think just how many pro-gun folks are out there. Some people aren't vocal. 
All right. We've created a society, not we specifically, but we live within a society where it seems that it's you're shunned upon for being a gun owner. Oh, it's not socially acceptable to discuss guns, right? It's not socially acceptable to discuss guns at church, to discuss guns at work, to discuss guns at school. So the left has very successfully shunned us into a corner where we're afraid to talk about firearms for fear of being shunned upon or shoved into a corner as being this evil person who's now an outsider and who's now a uh, deplorable, right? So when they do that, when they exclude us from the conversation and we're no longer a part of that conversation, we're just going to silently do what we need to do when it comes to the polls. And they're, they don't hear our voices, so they assume we're not there. And then all of a sudden, we're like a snake in the grass. We go, pow, and we get them, and that's it. Well, you know, one of, one of the encouraging signs, Eric, that, that we're hearing uh, from uh, offices on Capitol Hill uh, that we're talking to, uh, they said, you know, the, the, the media, the echo chamber that the media creates inside the beltway is loud. But they told us, they said, if your members weren't being equally as loud or, or even louder, this would already be a done deal. Uh, you know, uh, th this thing would have already been uh, wrapped up by now. But the fact that we're seeing Republicans now retreating on what they were saying previously in terms of, you know, supporting uh, certain gun control ideas is a testimony to the fact that people have been responding. Gun owners have been responding. They are contacting uh, their their representatives, their, their senators, and it's having a huge impact. I mean, this is how we, you know, you may remember in 2013, it was it was very discouraging after the uh, the Sandy Hook shooting. You know, they were blaming gun owners again. And if Eric, you remember that time that you know the the media, even guys on our side, were saying, "Yep, there's nothing we can do. Gun con some gun control is going to pass." And you know what? No gun control passed. And the reason why was because we were able to mobilize so many loud activists. Just you know, average. You know, people, you know, husbands, wives, you know, uh, you know, average gun owners that, that were taking the time just, you know, the, the few minutes either to make a call, which can be very effective, or uh, take action on one of our alerts by, you know, sending, uh, you know, an email message uh, to, to the Hill. That is so powerful. In fact, the, the New York Times credited uh, Gun Owners of America for uh, putting the nail in the coffin uh, for uh, Obama's gun control that year. But it it wasn't us working here inside the beltway. It was the power of the grassroots. And, you know, going forward, you know, again, just hearkening back to what you were saying, Eric, I mean, think about with the, the presidential elections coming up next year. Again, it only takes a small percentage of the base. You know, Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, in 2016, those states went for uh, President Trump by less than 80,000 votes. This is out of 29 million people that live in those three states. I mean, so we're talking about less than 1% of the people decided that for Trump and against Hillary. Uh, that is very significant because those are typically blue states. And so if you just kiss that off and say, you know, we're, we're going to, you know, ram gun control down your throats, whether you like it or not, then again, a lot of those pro-gun Democrats, you know, in those rural areas, they're going to say, well, you know what, I'm just going to vote on the other issues. Or you'll, you'll have Republicans that won't show up or will vote for, uh, you know, third party because, uh, the, you know, they think, well, you know, I, I don't want to support a candidate that's a attacking my Second Amendment rights. So, you know, they'll, they'll go third party. So th this is the problem that Republicans are, ha and I'm talking a lot about Republicans because quite honestly, gun control will not pass without their support. That's why we, we need to hit them so hard. The Republicans control the White House, they control the Senate. So if gun control passes, it's because enough Republicans caved and crossed the line. So that's why we, we really need to be hitting them hard. You know, I'm, I'm so happy that you mentioned that. And I know that something that Chad and I have really, really harped on this idea for a long time. Now, if you guys, some of y'all aren't from the South, you might know when I say harped, you know, it means complain. So I don't know, maybe some of y'all don't understand that euphemism. But, but anyway, we harped on about this, right? Talking about how, um, you know, we had a Republican controlled House Senate presidency. We had full control of the ship. And we, and uh, of course, the NRA was supposed to be 
you know, protecting our rights and everyone was on this NRA bandwagon. So why and all this time did we not get a single pro gun thing done, right? You would think, you know, that we had we didn't have any backbone. And that's the issue. There was no backbone. Speaker of the House, you know, no backbone to allow these things to be heard and to push it through. You know, we had the Hearing Protection Act. Uh, you know, we had national carry reciprocity. That was a big thing. I mean, these are all positive things that we could have that could have solidified. OK, the position of a lot of these Republicans, they could have way back then, even before this became a, you know, a huge Republican versus Democrat shindig, they could have solidified their support of the Second Amendment to their, to their voter base way back then with no opposition and chose not to do it. So what does that tell you about the people that we have to deal with, that they really are possibly far towards the middle than we might think when it comes to the Second Amendment? And that's why, as you said, Eric, it's important that we really keep the, the, their feet to the fire and we make sure that they're not going to cave on the Second Amendment because they've already showed us already without us putting their feet to the fire, that they're not willing to proactively preserve our rights. No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, I think there's several things we can do. And I think, first of all, fundamentally, look, we're, we're Americans and we enjoy the God-given right to be able to protect ourselves. So if you can carry a gun, please be carrying a gun. I, it was tragic to hear in El Paso the stories afterwards of people who, uh, could you know in in Texas you have to get a, a carry permit? And these were people that had permits, and they and they afterwards said, you know, I, I was just going to to the Walmart, and so I didn't think to to strap my gun on. And and that type of thinking has to change. I mean, we need to be carrying all the time, um, you know, so that we, you know, because honestly, we're the first line defenders. You know, we, we call the police, you know, the the, the first, you know, the, those on the front line, the first line. But but you know, we know. I mean, oftentimes. They're arriving after the fact, and we're very thankful when they can get there and stop something, but it's usually already when there's already been some casualties, uh, say, you know, as happened in El Paso and Dayton. So the real first-line responders are going to be the law-abiding citizens who are the potential victims, and so we need to be ready to defend ourselves. But then, you know, even beyond that, just what we're, we're talking about, and it, it doesn't take much effort. But, you know, sign up for our, our email alerts. It's completely free at gunowners.org. Sign up for those alerts because then, you know, you become part of that grassroots army where we're deluging the Hill and the White House with over two million uh, messages. I mean, and, and it's not coming from us. It's coming from you guys. You know, the, the, the grassroots, that is really significant. That's important. Uh, we've been generating phone calls as well. I mean, phone calls are, are really important. And I would say for this reason, reason. Um, I've been up there on, on the hill, on Capitol Hill, when lots of phone calls are coming in and you see the, the haggard look of, you know, the receptionist taking the calls and, and, and the, you just hear the phones constantly ringing and it's all on, you know, if, if guns is the hot topic, it, it, it's all on that issue. And that message bubbles up in the office. Like, you know, the, the chief of staff hears about it. Uh, the representative or senator hears about it. Yeah, we're getting a lot of calls uh, in, in opposition to, you know, universal background checks or, or red flags or wh whatever it is. That's really important. Uh, uh, to, to have that inner office dynamic where they, they can see with their eyes, yeah, there's there's a lot of people that are really exercised about this because ultimately the biggest thing they care about, I mean, you know this, they want to get reelected. And so if there's enough people that are saying, you know what, we're going to remember in November, that, that has an impact. I, I completely agree. And I think a, a really great spot to segue into in this video to kind of wrap things up uh, would be to discuss how important grassroots efforts are at a state level. I think that people need to understand that there are state battles that are occurring in a wide variety of different states. And it's really important for people to get really active and to make things happen at a state level, right? Um, you know, these state level fights are going to be really important, just like state level elections themselves are going to be really important. Like here in the governor's race recently in Georgia, we almost lost to Stacey Abrams by like 30,000 votes. It was a close margin, 
You know, we we almost had you know, and wound, wound up getting a Democratic governor with Stacey Abrams, and you know, our, our entire state's going blue. So, at a grassroots level, it's important that you become a, an ambassador to the Second Amendment, and you really push the gun vote hard on people, whether they're Democrat or Republican, because the gun vote is something that really will get people to go towards the side of freedom, and it's it's important that you vote with your feet when it comes to the Second Amendment, because all the rest of the things that we have very strong and passionate views on are irrelevant if we don't possess the teeth to protect those things protect our communities protect each other protect our families protect our home our country all of these things are important our country's our home and we're all brothers and sisters here whether we like it or not now we might be dysfunctional at times we might not always get along but if it's one thing we all have in common we all possess a need and a desire to protect ourselves, our families, and our communities. And it's important that at a grassroots level, we fight those state fights, and we try our best to keep these people from digging their teeth into us at a state level, too. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, you know, we really don't have the right to complain if we won't even take the time to register to vote and go vote. Uh, And, you know, even beyond that, uh, you know, one of the things my dad trained me in is, you know, get get others to go with you. I mean, that's just as important, uh, you know, and, and that's really what you're talking about, Eric, is, is being vocal on it and, and, and bringing others uh, in, making sure that they're registered to vote ahead of time. Um, all this is very key, uh, but also, you know, to stay educated. And so, you know, Eric, I'm, I'm so thankful that, you know, you would have us on uh, to talk about this. Uh, thank you for, for what you're doing uh, constantly and just uh, educating uh, gun owners on on the important issues that are out there. Uh, you know, share this video, uh, this stream with, with others. I mean, that's really important too, uh, so that we can help get the word out. Absolutely. And Eric, I really appreciate you taking a moment to be on my gun gripe here with me today. And just know that Gun Owners of America always has a microphone with us. You let me know anytime y'all want to make videos. We're always more than happy to have you on. It's always a pleasure. We always love the wisdom that comes out of your mouth. And you are a very wonderful voice for the Second Amendment. And we appreciate you being that voice. And uh, we're proud that we can hopefully be a, a microcosm of that voice that rings out amongst all different places and hopefully we reach some people so thank you guys for watching today's video we really really appreciate the support support GOA if you have the means go and uh, check out the you know the pre uh, the pre-written letters that you can send off they're super easy uh, you can add to them take away just like Eric said you don't have to use the exact wording but they already have pre-typed letters that are really easy to use uh, cut and paste. Make sure you're sending them. They, they've got all that stuff set up. You'll see the uh, link in the description box below that'll take you to those pages. Guys, we've got to make sure we're ringing the bell hard and we're getting people involved and we're, we're organizing the troops. And uh, GOA is on the forefront of that fight. And I definitely, uh, Eric, I thank you for being here. And uh, I really uh, hope you have a great day and we hope to have you on soon again. Thank you so much, Eric. Yeah, take care. Wonderful. Okay, guys, we're going to sign off. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Many more gun gripes on the way. Uh, Definitely want to take a quick moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are wonderful. Thank you so much. All the folks who purchase man cans, t-shirts on the website, all the funds we earn off of those go right back to supporting the channel. Thank you guys so much. Take a moment to support GOA. We do. Uh, I, I'm glad to say that we, uh, you know, we support GOA obviously financially Thank you. and through, with our resources. So if you can do that, uh, be sure to support GOA as well. So thank you all very much. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time.